Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and today we will discuss what are the effects of permanent winds on weather conditions of a given region. We have already discussed how permanent winds flow, how they are created and what are their characteristics in another videos. The link for which is available in the description. So let's start with surface winds. Here we can see the flow of surface winds. This is Headley cell, this is feral cell and this is polar cell. And we can see how surface winds flow in these cells. Now these winds are flowing from the eastern direction. Therefore they are called easterlies. These winds are flowing from the western direction. Therefore we call it westerlies. And these are again called as the polar winds or easterly winds. Because they are flowing in the eastern directions. Now if we look at the surface waves in Headley cell. We will see that these waves are moving in from the eastern direction. Therefore they bring rain to the eastern margin of continents. We can see for all continents this is true. Here it is the eastern margin and these winds which are flowing from the eastern direction will bring rain over here. Similarly we can see over here that these easterlies will bring rain in this region. Therefore the eastern margins of continent in the tropical region receive rain from these easterly trade winds. Now if you go to the western margin of these continents we can see that not much rain is brought over here because these winds are flowing from the eastern direction and they flow over continent over here. Therefore most of their moisture is lost till they reach the western margins and therefore in most of the continents on the western margins we will see that there exists a desert. We can see over here there is a desert, here there is a desert, here is Sahara desert and we can see even in Australia there is a desert. Now if, if we go to higher latitudes we will see that these westerlies they bring rain to the western margin of continents in the temperate region or under the feral cell. So you can see that some rainfall is over here and again there is some rainfall over here. And these westerlies do not bring rain to the eastern margin of continents. So here we can clearly see that easterly winds bring rain to the eastern margin of continents and they do not bring much rain to the western margin of continents and similarly the westerlies bring rain to the western margin of continents and they do not bring much rain to the eastern margin of continents. Moving forward we will see the effects of vertical winds in a wind cell. So here we can clearly see Headley cell feral cell and polar cell. We can see that here the air rises at the equatorial region. The air which rises it descends back at the subtropical high pressure belt. Again this feral cell and the polar cell air will rise at the polar low pressure belt. So we can see that there are vertical currents in this wind cells. Now because the air is rising over here whatever moisture is present in this air it will be converted into clouds. So we can see here that there are a large number of clouds across this belt. But because here the winds are moving downwards and therefore the winds are getting adiabatically heated. Therefore they do not bring any rainfall and very less clouds are formed over here. So you can see in this belt that there is very less amount of clouds. Now again over here you will see that the polar cell and the feral cell air rises up. And because they rise up, they form a large number of clouds over here because of adiabatic cooling. In this image from NASA, we can clearly see that in the central region where the Headley cell is rising, there are a large number of clouds. Now when we go to the higher latitudes where we see that the Headley cell descends, we will see that this is relatively much clearer. Whatever clouds are there are over the oceans but if you see the continents then they are virtually cloudless because the air is descending over here and descending air gets adiabatically heated thus it does not produce any rainfall or clouds. Again when we go to higher latitudes in the polar regions we can see that because of the air rising over here a large number of clouds are formed over here. So we can clearly see that how these vertical wind currents affect the cloud formation and rain in these regions. Now let's see how the wind cells affect the climate of a region. Here we can see Headley cells and the air of the Headley cell rises over the equatorial region and it forms clouds. We also have a low pressure belt over here. Now because the air is continuously rising throughout the year, there is a lot of rainfall. 
And because of this rainfall, we see evergreen forest in this region. We can see that on all the continents which lie in this belt, there are evergreen forests. This region is also called doldrums because there is no surface current in these regions and therefore it is difficult to maneuver ships without winds in this region and therefore we call them doldrums. Now if we move higher, we will see that at the intersection of Hadley cell and Ferrell cell, the air descends. Now we know that descending air increases the pressure on the surface, therefore it creates a high pressure belt. Now moreover, the air is descending over here, therefore it does not give any rains. The air, when it descends, it gets adiabatically heated, it does not give any rainfall. And therefore we see a lot of deserts in this region. We can see in both the belts, in the Northern Hemisphere as well as the Southern Hemisphere, there are deserts in this region. This belt is also called as horse latitude. Because of the descending air, the surface currents are very slow or almost non-existent. And therefore, again, it was difficult for ships in the older ages to maneuver. The ships had to throw away some horses in the sea for maneuvering and that is why it was called as horse latitude. If you move further north in the higher region, polar regions, we will see that at the intersection of the polar cell and feral cell, the air again rises up. And therefore, we again see formation of lot of clouds over here. Because of the rising air, there is a low pressure belt over here. And again, there is a lot of rain and snowfall in these regions. So we can see how the local climate is varied based on whether the air is rising over there or the air is descending over there. Now when we impose this image on a cloud map, we can clearly see that in the equatorial region, there are a lot of clouds formed. And because of these clouds, we see evergreen forests here. When we go to the subtropical high pressure belt, we see that the clouds are very less. And therefore, we see formation of deserts over here. Again, when we go to the polar low pressure belt, we will see that a large number of clouds are formed over here. And there are a lot of snowfalls in these regions because of the air which is rising up. We already know that the wind sails are not stationary, but they continuously change their location or change their position based on the movement of sun over earth. Here we can see how the surface winds and the pressure belts change their location based on the sun's position. In the summer, the sun is located in northern hemisphere. Therefore, all the pressure belts and winds are extended in the northern hemisphere. Similarly, during the winter season, we see that the sun is located in southern hemisphere near Tropic of Capricorn. And we see that all the pressure belts and wind cells are extending in the southern direction. Now, because of this movement, a very important feature occurs. We get a region over here and over here where the direction of this permanent winds changes. You can see that right now it is moving from this direction. But when the sun moves in the southern hemisphere, the wind direction changes. And again, this wind will bring rainfall over here in winter. This is the winter season for Northern Hemisphere. Again, when the sun comes up, we will see that these easterlies will start flowing over the Mediterranean region. And again, there will be summer and there will be no rain in this season. So because of the movement of the permanent winds, we see that climatic conditions at a place can also be changed. I hope you liked our video on the effects of permanent winds on the climatic conditions of a region. If you have liked it, then please subscribe and share it with your friends.